diseases aren't always reading the textbook to know exactly what to do. And most doctors know about a disease called Kawasaki disease, which is a uh, five-day fever, and they get glands in the throat, and the lips look a little red, and they get a little redness in the eyes when they shut. But sometimes it's atypical. What does that term mean, atypical Kawasaki disease, from your point of view? Well, because you get consults, we're not sure. Is that true? Correct. Um, I think that this particular diagnosis has created a lot of confusion. Um, what atypical Kawasaki, Kawasaki disease, in order to make the diagnosis, you meet the clinical criteria that you mentioned. Fever for at least five days, conjunctivitis, uh, enlarged lymph nodes. Well, it's conjunctivitis, but we, it's really like, it, it, the, the eyes are red, classically no discharge. Correct. Okay, so it's inflammation. Inflammation of, of, bo of both eyes, not the typical pink eye, but inflammation of both eyes without pus coming out, um, a rash, enlarged lymph nodes, uh, swelling and redness, eventually peeling of the hands and feet. Sometimes the, the diaper area, there's like a, like a reddish area. Red, the, the tips of the fingers, the toes are swollen. Swollen, red, and, and, and painful. Um, and, and this disease can have uh, some cardiac manifestations. It's, it's, it's a vasculitis and inflammation throughout the vessels, and the blood vessels in the heart, the coronary arteries, can enlarge. Um, what, what was occurring is that they found that in about 10% of Kawasaki, so a small percentage, but, but there, of Kawasaki patients didn't quite meet all the criteria. They might have been missing one or two. And it was felt that these were atypical in that maybe they didn't have the rash or maybe they didn't have the conjunctivitis, but they had everything else, including the typical laboratory findings of an elevated platelet count um, and sedimentation rate. And these sed rates are really high. Correct. The high sed rates, I think, was 35, 40. They have 100. Like, these are like, uh, unbelievable, they're through the roof, they're skyrocketing. Right. These, these patients look like Kawasaki patients, however, they're just not quite meeting the criteria, and these patients can often have the coronary involvement. Uh, I think the misconception, um, and, and what's confused people, is that you could just have fever for five days with no other symptoms, and that you're at risk for Kawasaki, and that really wasn't what um, the, the research and the article stated. Um, it was people who really looked like Kawasaki, they just didn't quite meet the criteria, and instead of withholding treatment from those patients, you would treat them as you would a Kawasaki. And that treatment is? Is uh, intravenous gamma globulin um, given in a hospital. Um, usually the patients are admitted for, for two days. Um, it's given uh, two grams per kilogram IV, uh, usually fairly slowly over a 12-hour period, followed by aspirin therapy. Uh, first high-dose aspirin, and then the children will usually go home on a low-dose aspirin. What's high-dose? Very high? Um, yes, it's very high dose. Um, your, your, your child would, would be taking a, uh, several adult uh, pills, um, 50 milligrams uh, per, per kilogram, a large aspirin dose. This For how is, long? This is only done till the child's fever goes away. So this is usually only done in the hospital. By the time the child is going home, they're on a, a fraction, one-tenth of that dose. Um, maybe a baby aspirin or half a baby aspirin a For day. how long a period? Um, that's usually for at least eight weeks, at least eight months, uh, eight weeks. Um, but that also depends on your cardiologist. If the child did have inflammation in the heart, then the aspirin would continue indefinitely. Do we know what causes Kawasaki? We we don't know. Um, hopefully someday we will. Um, it's believed that it's some infectious cause. Um, certainly there is some genetic predisposition. We see it more commonly in certain ethnic groups um, than in others. So it's probably some environmental cause. I believe with some genetic predisposition. So a little of this, a little of that. Correct. And, but giving IV gamma globulin generally is not really a terrible thing to do, is that true? Um, it's not a terrible thing to do. I think with everything you have to weigh your risk uh, and, and benefits. It is a pooled blood product. It is tested. There is a slight, slight risk, of course, of, uh, uh, of, of an infectious uh, disease transmitted, a slight risk. And also, um, it's given IV and there can be an allergic reaction, and I have seen um, those occur. So I think it's important... But it's always given in a hospital. Correct. It's under controlled situations. Correct. If they did get a severe allergic, they're already with the ways to neutralize it. That's correct. So uh, we haven't heard any kid really, in, at least in our area, really getting hurt by heavy. You know. No, it, it, it is safe um, and efficacious. Um, however, I do think it needs to be given, which most of the time it is, in the appropriate um, situations where the patients do meet uh, the majority of the clinical criteria. Well, the blood supply to the heart gets dilated, and they have like little microaneurysms. Correct. And then eventually they get narrow, 
And it could be that these kids end up with getting bypass surgery. That's true. It's not common. I actually had a kid that was diagnosed on the first day end up with bypass surgery. So at six years old, very unusual. And thank God I only have one. So there is a risk here. There, there, there is a risk, and the, and, the, and the IV gamma globulin is not 100% effective, but it does significantly reduce the risk. And you of want to the get them in like the first few days, up to 10 days, it's still effective. Right, right? you b basically want the uh, gamma globulin treatment um, within the first uh, 10 to 14 days, which is why you have time. If a child has fever for three or four days and kind of looks like Kawasaki, it's okay to wait the full five days, as the clinical criteria suggest, and there's going to be no harm in waiting the full five days to see because often I've had patients where they look like Kawasaki day three day four and then all of a sudden they wind up with a urinary tract infection or pneumonia uh, and the treatment for that is obviously different and you can see the differential it can look a bit a little bit like German measles to some people sure rheumatic rheumatic scarlet fever is so you can see it's not always drug reaction it. there can be many things it's, it's, it's sometimes not an easy thing it's, it's sometimes very, if you're not it's sure tricky. you get to see the kid you do the echo you watch the kid and sometimes we as good doctors are, who are fathers and grandfathers and uncles, we sometimes may overdo the gamma globulin, but we'd rather be a little bit safe. I agree.